Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Josh Saudi XC here with another interview. Got with me Blue Screen, graciously joining me all the way from Australia. How's it going today? It's going good, mate. Yeah, I don't normally get up this early, uh, but uh, you were kind enough to have me on your little show, so I thought uh, I better put my my game voice on. You won't see me, but you'll hear me. So yeah, I'm going well. How are you doing? Doing well. It's weird calling somebody who lives in the future, but it's still pretty neat. Uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be, man. Even a day ahead, and it's yeah, I've got nothing good to report. So yeah. <laughs> all right. Boring. Well, I guess let's launch into this. Like, um, what you got coming out right now? Like, what's what's going on? What's going on in the blue screen world? What is going on in the blue screen world? Uh, well, uh, I've been. I just announced the last entry into a 16-part compilation album series, um, which I've uh, uh, pretty much got dubbed the J-Card series <clears throat> because all the front covers were designed to be J-Card friendly in case they ever got turned into physicals. So that's a long time coming, this, this whole series. I never thought I would do 16, um, but I just, I love compilation albums and uh, you know, a year and a half, two years down the track, however long it's been. <clears throat> um, yeah, I just announced the, the last one yesterday. Um, so that'll be coming out hopefully early next year, I'd say January, February. That's pretty cool. 16 parts. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a, a lot of music to throw into the, the Vaporwave black hole, you know, which just continues to expand every day. Yeah, and... I definitely know that I've got over 100 cassettes here and I've, I've got new ones I need more cassette shelves and I'm just like where is all this coming from that's dope my, my collection is really really small um, by comparison I always like check groups and stuff and I'm just like mine's so, I feel so inadequate you know it's, it's like this little <laughs> intimate little thing and you know I have to I have to be honest you know a lot of those physicals are, you know artist copies that have been sent to me after an album of mine's been released on an album uh, on a label that has done physicals so it's kind of like a bit um self-indulgent so i'm hoping that i can branch it out a bit more and and be a bit more supportive yeah uh, in my collection nice 100 tapes how long has it taken you to to do that 100 tapes a couple of years i started collecting tapes i think back in about 2016 2017 and um the first one i got was actually a, a business casual biz box and, awesome, because uh, it it had uh, the the haircuts for men release, and I remember thinking that album was super cool when I was getting into vapor. Like it's still super cool, but at the time yeah. I was like, I need that. Yeah, yeah, it it, it is, has got sort of that essential you know sort of um, status now, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Especially now that it's been taken off Bandcamp for like oversampling or whatever, whatever the reason was. I think it was because some of the samples were uh, a little too identifiable. Yeah, from what I can gather, that's um, that was the that was uh, yeah that was what was happening. And uh, haircuts has been kind of doing that a bit more now as well, like releasing more stuff, but kind of venturing away from. I don't know. I want I don't want to call it obvious, but like more classic sounding stuff. Yeah. So what's your what's your kind of stance on sampling? Do you try to do mostly uh, stuff you can create on your own, or do you just like going in there and being like this this commercial sounds dope? Throw that in there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I feel like there was a, a period, or maybe we're still going through it, but I noticed a lot of labels were starting to make official announcements saying we're not going to be accepting um, any, you know, classic style Vaporwave anymore. We want to, and, and, you know, fair enough, if you want to avoid that sort of, uh, that legal gray area, um, then by all means go for it. And yeah, it'll... Uh, hopefully um, motivate artists to create their own stuff. But me personally, I started out making classic. I still like making classic. Um, and it's always going to be a, sort of a part of um, what I do. I've been since trying to move forward and expand uh, my sound by doing more pro uh, pro like uh, original stuff, which is great because before I got into Vaporwave, that's all I was doing anyway was just doing like um, instrumental hip hop and uh, dark ambient and all of that stuff was originally composed so it's not a, a hard jump for me to go back into doing original stuff but yeah I, I, I've got a sample tattooed on my arm so for, for me 
like I, I got really heavily into hip hop uh, just out of high school, um, and that was I like did rap for a while. Like I would do shows, and um, that was um, a, such an eye opener from going from like being in a metal band in high school and then this world of sampling, like take the arm and break, you know, and all these sort of classic samples that everybody knows, but they get used constantly, even to this day. Um, so for me, it was like, this is, it's, it's an audio collage, you know, you just kind of take little bits and pieces and kind of make it um, something new. So I'm a hundred percent behind people that want to use um, or that want to do sampling. Cause I don't really see it being um, that much of a, of an issue. Yeah, I don't either. Then again, <laughs> I'm not. Then again, I'm not having people like come knocking on my door or like sending me takedown notices saying like, "Stop doing that." So, it might uh, my my tune might change uh, if I ever get those emails. But uh, so far, so good. Touch wood. I was gonna say like at some point you're gonna blow up and you're gonna get a cease and desist from Nickelodeon over the like Legends of the Hidden Temple sample on Volume Two. Yeah. <laughs> I I lost yeah. my mind when that came on cuz like I was hearing like the the like drums I was like this reminds me of Legend of the Hidden Temple and then like the the synth, the synth flutes came in and I was just like oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um that's it seemed to um get uh yeah, quite a bit of love. Um and it's yeah, I guess it uh, kind of is a it's a bit of a it can fire back on you because yeah, as you said, like I don't know if I'll ever blow up per se. But, um, you know, it, it, there are people out there that do share their stories about how, you know, someone catches them out and says no more. And then you kind of have to re, you know, rethink your, uh, the way you go at, go at things. Or I could just change my alias and just keep doing it for another couple of years. Who knows? Yeah, just like swap it to green screen or something. They'll, they'll never find you. That's what I was thinking, you know, because green screen still works in the technological sense, you know, because obviously blue screen's a nice little, you know, computer nod, but green screen's more of a, a video nod. Maybe I could just make my shift to make more, like, audio visual albums. Who knows? Only time will tell. <laughs> yeah. So how did you make that transition from, like, a death metal band, in, or maybe not death metal, but, like, a heavy metal band in high school into, like, hip-hop into Vaporwave? Um, I think it was just kind of, it came natural. I find that after I get really immersed in something, like I just, I have to experience all of it, you know, and that's the going to the shows. And, and I don't think that that's like a unique um, perspective. I think a lot of people who love music um, as much as I do go through that, that um, sort of evolution where it's like where you start out with something that appeals to you and perhaps there is something that works really well when you're a teenager and, and loud and heavy music um, because it's so expressive and raw and, and I think you know growing up is quite similar um, but then yeah it was always a natural thing mo mostly through either people I knew and then they would recommend something for me to listen to and then so I just gradually moved on to hip-hop and meeting different friends in hip-hop circles and then I moved on to electronic music and then uh, yeah, I think I made some friends during that period. Um, definitely went out dancing a lot, <laughs> and and then got into DJing, and then so all of that sort of became this amalgamation of everything that I'd already learned. So moving forward with vaporwave, I think it was a a very normal um, uh, process to be expected of someone who just loves music and loves experimenting with sound as a as a waveform. You know, if you want to take it down to the square root of things. Um, it's all just music. It's all just sound, and and uh, yeah, the the more open you can be to different sounds, then the better. So that was what ninety. When did I? Feel? This is a while back now, man, because I'm like thirty six. So I've got to like really, I've got to wreck my brain. Plus, it's like early in the morning, so you're gonna have to forgive me. But so that was like nineteen ninety nine, or like ninety seven to ninety nine was like really heavily into playing in bands, and then from like early 2000s to mid 2000s into hip hop and then from like 2005 to pretty much up until 2015 was just like uh, experimental electronic music dance music i don't want to say like edm because you know i prefer to be a bit more genre specific but like you know just all kinds of electronic music and then around 2016 is when i uh discovered um well, did, I already knew about Vaporwave, but I didn't really start uh, Sunset Grid, uh, my label, until uh, 2016. So, yeah. Nice. Fun times. 
So when you're getting into Vaporwave, like what were some of those first albums for you that were like, yeah, this, this is dope? Um, okay, so like obviously 2016, you know, that's kind of late in the game for me to, you know, become a part of it. Um, so at that, at that particular time, uh, what was it, like New Gaia, I really liked that. Um, I know that like it's kind of like, you know, Frank Jeff C's kind of like a, you know, a meme artist. But um, I randomly came across some of his stuff uh, on YouTube, like How to Make Simpson Wave, I think it was. Nice. And it was, you know, a little bit of a, it, it kind of sounded like his own version of, like, um, Home, um, uh, Renaissance. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of grabbed me. So that was what kind of got me started um, initially. Um, and then there were some other ones that came out, obviously, like Video Fashion, Daytime Television. I really, um, really dug that one, and um, there was another one. Um, oh, another. There was one more. There was one more album, and then that was it. <laughs> there was like so many fucking albums that came out. Um, a Pink Soda as well. I really enjoyed that album. Um, News at Eleven, obviously, was a was a fantastic one. But you know, uh, uh, oh, and Rain Temple as well. Oh, nice. Um, I like Rain Temple. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. It seems to be like a bit of a, a class divider. You know, you've got some people saying, this isn't Vaporwave, this is just ambient, and other people saying, yeah, but Vaporwave can be ambient, you know, especially if it's just ambient Vaporwave. There's there's ways to merge these things. Um, but yeah, I thought Rain Temple was really cool, just being as a fan of that sort of more dystopian um, sort of uh, aesthetic. Um, obviously, Summer Love by Dan Mason was good. Um yeah, uh, that was the 2016. Uh, whoops, sorry, I'm just that's my actual alarm. Um, so yeah, those were yeah pretty good. Future girlfriend through space to see you was another one I really enjoyed. Um, and then yeah, I just kind of went backwards and sort of checked out all the ones that I knew were worth checking out. I mean, I'd already you know um, heard about the. The classic ones, you know, like obviously um, Echo Jam's uh, Volume One, and Skeleton, and Holograms, and all of those, like, kind of like the the very first sort of pioneers of the sound. I'd already been aware of, and 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 you know, whether you wanted to get into vaporwave or not, everybody had heard of Floral Shop. Yeah. So that was just even if I made it my business not to hear it, it would still come up in my feed regardless. Um, so. <laughs> Um, it was kind of, I'd already been aware of those particular albums and I had enjoyed them, but it, I didn't really start, yeah, sort of getting into it till, um, yeah, to, to, yeah, 2016. So it's been kind of like, it's been a weird process of moving forward and creating music and hosting a label for other artists while trying to like simultaneously move forward and make new music but also kind of work my way back and kind of like discover the roots of it at the same time um which is like you know some people will say it all kind of sounds the same but to me i feel like there's definitely a big distinction between like say 2012 and 2019 vaporwave oh yeah um, for sure like if you like if you listen to like floral shop and then you listen to something now that's heavily inspired by floral shop it's like yeah there's similarities but they're very different Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's almost crazy like how people will say it sounds the same but like how far we've come uh yeah. or, like as a genre since since then absolutely and, yeah, for you sure. know, and it, it's also just kind of strange that you you can have like you know floral shop but then like the new like 3d blast will kind of exist under the same umbrella and they sound nothing alike yeah 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 definitely yeah i think that's a good parallel to make actually <clears throat> there's there's this um there's these artists that will you know uh kind of remain very consistent with their sound and then there'll be other artists that just constantly reinvent themselves um which sounds so new and dynamic i mean when i first heard like what came out last like slide by clanton you know that was just so not what i had really um i wasn't expecting that um, at all. Um, so when it came out, looking back at, you know, the, the previous, you know, seven years, 
um, you could see how it would be absolutely welcomed within the community, but how it's completely taking the genre forward um, and sort of breaking down moulds of, of what is actually considered. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't even call it Vaporwave anymore. Um, and that's not like a, that's not a diss. That's like a, I guess you could call it a compliment. You know, it's kind of like this is, this is just how music goes. You know, there's really no which way about it. It just kind of, you know, develops um, like organically. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's it's. Um, I like 3D Blast actually. I, I, uh, I, yeah, I like the his varied styles. You know, it's always like you can be like super super catchy and really like kind of almost future funky, but a bit, bit more slow. And then other stuff will be just like totally left field, more you know experimental, like down tempo, glitchy. I don't know. It's hard to kind of put a a label on it. Oh, for sure. And I, I have uh, I have three albums by 3D Blast. I've got uh, Like Die Are Hero. Are they all on tape as well? They're all on tape. I've got yeah. uh, <laughs> I, uh, Iconic Bitch. I've got Die Hero, which is my personal favorite. Then I've got mm-hmm. like Promise Girl. And like you can you can always hear the parallels between them. But yeah, from, from album to album, it's kind of like, oh, there's some classic vapor on here. Man, this is this, this could almost be in like a modern commercial. And, and you know, it's just yeah. like, wow. OK. Like, yeah. And um, I would say like Dan Mason, who they're obviously friends, they're always feuding on Twitter, are kind of like the same way, because you listen to old Dan Mason and new Dan Mason, and it's just kind of like, wow, okay, yeah, you've grown a lot, uh, yeah. which is which is neat. Um, nice. Like, yeah, when when I got into Vaporwave, it was literally my friend Alex. We, were, we bo- both worked in the same office, and he sent me Floral Shop. I was like, this album changed my life, and I was just like, okay, and I listened to it for about 20 minutes, and I was like, this is weird, I don't like it. Then I yeah. came back to it like later on that day because I kept humming uh, the uh, like Lisa Frank 420 or whatever it was, and it was just like, cool. Mm-hmm. Guess I'm in this rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like once once uh, your brain can um, acknowledge like uh, some element that you appreciate, um, then you become fixated, and and then it's all over. You know, you you basically you know just have to uh, dedicate yourself and uh, and and be immersed in it. Um, yeah and like i think well for me personally it's 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 both like new and nostalgic at the same time which is kind of a weird combo to get where it's like i've never heard this before but it's very familiar and i think that's why most people kind of fall into the rabbit hole is because it's like you get those classic sounds that you heard you know back in the 90s but in a new way yeah, I mean, isn't that kind of the antithesis of of vaporwave? As a, as you know, if you if you were were trying to, ex- I've tried to explain it to to people before, like my mum, for example. You know, like I'll kind of bounce things um, past her to see what she thinks of some of my stuff or other people's stuff that I'm playing or getting into, and 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 the 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 only way that I could kind of explain it was like, you know, it's it's people making music in the present <clears throat> um, for future generations to listen to something that may have existed in the past. And it's so weird because, like me, I, I am a child of the 80s, but there are so many artists that are out there that um, that are making music that, like, are 90s kids or even, like, in the 2000s. And um, for them to interpret the nostalgic aesthetic of the 80s um, while not having any kind of like first world, not first world, but like um, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, they don't like, have that like first hand experience. They don't have they, they don't have the context. Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. So it's 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 so interesting because a lot of it is just so bang on, and it's it's great to see new generations um, be interested in music that um, is is so easily identifiable as like eighties, you know, and nostalgia and, and whatever. And now it's obviously continuing to move forward where people are doing it with the nineties and even late nineties. Like sometimes I'll hear stuff from like 99 and I'm like, Oh wow. Is this, I feel old now because you know, we're, we're, we're vaping tracks from like 99, which I just never thought would, would kind of work. But if it's done in the right way, it really doesn't matter where the sample came from. If you can make someone, Get, get that feeling that it, they've heard it, you know, sometime a long time ago. Um, then you know you've obviously done a good job. Like you saying ninety nine, getting kind of you know in that like vaporwave thing. My brain's going like, when is somebody going to slow down the prodigy? <laughs> yeah, well, I do. Do you feel like there are certain 
certain groups that just should be left alone, like out of respect for their sort of legacy, because you know, obviously, you know, Keith, you know, passed away recently. Yeah. Um, well, feel, it feels like recently to me, and you know, th- th- their um, their music um, just laid such uh, groundwork in terms of what you could do. You could literally be like a heavy band with synthesizers. And uh, I saw them at my first music festival, and it blew blew me out of the water. Um, so I guess yeah, if I had to round it down to a question, do you do you think that there are certain artists that you would like to just be left alone, or do you think that like anything's fair game? There there are certain artists that I would like to see left alone for sure. Uh, like I I think that uh, you know like the Prodigy, they were so kind of groundbreaking at the time. Like maybe maybe let's just leave it alone. But I also believe that. Um, in a way, like nothing is sacred it, to to everybody. So, like it, it's gonna happen, and it's just kind of a matter of w- like when. But I think most yeah. people are kind yeah. of in the same vein of like, let's let, let's leave that alone. And uh, but yeah. you're you, you're gonna have that outlier who's just gonna be like, nope. Yeah, that, it, it, like give it another ten years or another twenty years. You know, I'll be fifty, <laughs> and there'll be there'll be kids that are like sampling all the music that we're talking about should be left alone now, and they'll they'll be doing it. They'll be like, yeah, but it's so nostalgic, you know. So like, nostalgia is, you know, for vaporwave is very identifiable within the eighties sort of early nineties um, sort of time frame. But nostalgic is, you know, I talk to my mom about nostalgia, and she'll talk about the fifties and the sixties. You know, so it's like, what is like, you know, as you're saying, nothing is sacred. It's all just sort of relative to the person's perspective. So a couple of years from now, those kids aren't going to know any better. They're going to look back and go, oh, man, did you check out this band, The Prodigy? They're so cool. We should totally vape those guys. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to uh, to think as a genre what Vaporwave will do, what it will incorporate within its spectrum or what it will leave alone. I think that kind of lies with... Um, whoever's constant, whoever's making music for that genre at that time, and that's always gonna, that's always gonna change. Yeah, and and I think that if we kind of follow the uh, like hyper commercialization aspect that like Vaporwave's really embraced, the Prodigy might not be a top candidate. Maybe Fatboy Slim. He was in a lot of commercials. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think yeah, you're definitely right because um, I mean. There's that sort of uh, marketability. Um, you couldn't. They're very popular band, and everybody knows the Prodigy. But um, there might be some of those that wouldn't say that they'd necessarily enjoy it because, on a commercial level, at least um, in a like sort of pop radio sensibility, um, they weren't really used as much as say like if Fatboy Slim or like well, the you know Freestylers or Moby or something like that, where you oh, know. Moby, I forgot about him. Yeah, I I almost did too. I'm sorry that I had to remind you, because <laughs> I think he's gone a bit wacko. And like something came up recently about how like he was cracking on to Natalie Portman when she was like underage, and so I've kind of gone. Oh, well, you know what? I wasn't really that into your music anyway, so I'm just gonna close that chapter <laughs> for good. Just like a a weird bald EDM guy from the from the '90s was weird. Ugh. Shocked. Yeah. Who would have thought? Yes, I know. It's weird. Yeah. So um. Yeah. All right, so talking like, about music stuff. Talking about music stuff. All right, um, so we've gone over what are the albums that got got you into like what are you, what are some of your just like favorites though like like what's something you just put on as like a yeah this is dope I'm gonna put on some blank banshee that's me as an example. Oh okay yeah yeah um it's hard to like normally I won't go to like one album in particular because um I'm like I just. I covered music, so like I'll just have a massive folder of like I think it's up to about seven thousand albums, God and dang. yeah, <laughs> like every day that's what I do. I just like add it to the the vault and basically put it through um, uh, iTunes and just hit random. And so it's always like kind of refreshing for me. <clears throat> but if I had to uh, go to any particular favorites, like I'd say Overgrowth. Um, was um, was a favorite, uh, 2015, <coughs> by um, Digital Sex Oscop. Nice. Uh, slash Oscop, yeah. Uh, Future Girlfriend, Pink Dance EP was was like an absolute banger for me. Um, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, God, there's 
just so many. Oh, you know what? I really like, um, you know, Childhood? No, actually. Well, I'll see if I can, like, I forget the name of the album. But did this, like, sample with, uh... It was using, um, Sledgehammer. Oh, um, nice. As the, as the sample. And because it's, like, not really changed that much, it's just cut up, like, a shit ton... Um, it, I, I was just like, whoa, this, oh yeah, call my name. So the album was, um, yeah, it's Childhood by Childhood. That's why I couldn't think of the album name, because it is Childhood. Um, that's, um, definitely a, an album of mine that, um, really, like, um, inspired me to, yeah, get into it. So that's definitely a go-to. Um, uh, so that was, what, 2013 when that album came out. So that's, um, yeah, that's a, a favorite. Um, what else? Uh... Let me think. I mean, obviously, Mesh, you know, love his stuff. Same. Um, because it's just constantly surprising me and pushing me to, like, not sort of subscribe to, um, you know, any kind of uh, preconception of what you should be doing with music. Um, and, yeah, I find he's just like a, yeah, he's always pushing it, um, which is which is great. And, um, and Hit Vibes by St. Pepsi, I'd say, would, would definitely be... Um, another go-to of mine as far as, like, the older albums. That album is so concerned. good. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> dude <laughs> it always like... gets me hype. If I'm never feeling shit, I just put that on. I'm like, yeah, bitch. You know, and I just start walking around with an undeserved sense of, of self-importance. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> like, same. Yeah. And uh, okay. it was, it was uh, like, a couple... Um, like, a couple months ago, St. Pepsi uh, just threw out, like, 10,000 codes to get that for free on Bandcamp. And I was like, gimme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. I definitely, um, yeah, definitely say it's up there as um, uh, one of the best. Um, obviously, Esprit, you know, that's a lot of um, uh, a lot of love there. And I'm actually trying to find I a mean, copy of uh, Virtua.zip on cassette. It's not super expensive, but like finding one is difficult. Oh yeah, you'd like? Do you find like? Because you've obviously got a, a decent collection now, do you kind of like every day you'll go online and be like, I wonder if it's up, if someone's listed it uh, today, like do you check it every day to see if you can just like snag one? I usually check it like every two weeks, like as soon as payday comes in, I'm yeah. like, I got an extra 30 bucks, let's see. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, uh, so I'd say that those ones are, uh, are my fave, but um, it's it's hard to nail down because there's just... It's just so much music, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, in fact, it would. Be, it, 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 I was going to say it'd be easier for me to, to just name artists that I really appreciate. But even saying that, that's almost impossible because there's so many artists, like thousands, thousands. I can't. I can't. All I can say is that everyone who's in it, who's who's staying true to themselves and um, being the best version of themselves that they can be. Um, chances are, you know, that's the music that I want to hear, regardless of whether it's really obscure, soundscapey, ambient, you know, drone, or if it's like just absolutely, you know, future bass, you know, slash future funk, you know, Japanese kawaii style stuff. Like it, you know, it can be anything, um, as long as the the artist is is happy with what they're putting out. <clears throat> yeah, fair enough. But yeah, compilation. Of kind of my jam at the moment. I, I haven't really had a chance to appreciate albums as a single entity. Rather, I just do the the compilations. Because for me, if I do, if I might say so, if I do a compilation, then I've got all these submissions from different artists. And if I haven't heard of any of them, then that automatically becomes another door or another avenue that I can explore through that artist. Um, so if it's like it's very inclusive, and like it's the kind of stuff that I would love more people to be doing or at least have been doing when I uh, got into Vaporwave um, because I just find that it helps people kind of get to know each other. Um, people can kind of do the same thing I do, you know, look at the whole list and go, wow, there's some people on here I haven't heard of before. Like maybe I can like, you know, go follow them or collab and, you know, kind of expand that um, Vaporwave circle. So, yeah. Nice. Compilations are cool, man. They're fun. It's a good American accent. Well, I was married to an American for uh, a couple of years, um, so I tried to pick it up, but anytime I'd do it, they just, 
they just make fun of me because you know. <laughs> so, I put too much of a, I put too much of a tang a twang on it. And I'll just be like, ah, oh, you fucking asshole. Give me my coffee. You uh, know, yeah, like, where, does, where are you it's from? Very you from Jersey or New York? Yeah, <laughs> it's like where exactly are you from? Yeah, it's super uh, the more I try East. to sound American, the more East Coast I sound. I mean, that's America. It counts. It does count. So thank you. I'm glad you can appreciate where I'm coming from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. One one more artist that I really love is Waterfront Dining. Oh, because, me too. Yeah, I just like I've always loved his shit. Um, and as a classic vaporwave artist, like listening to his stuff, it, not that I needed validation, but I think because he's been in the game for a while, it always made me realize like there's nothing wrong with doing like full on just classic vapor <clears throat> and minimalistic at, at that. You know, it's not even that much, cho it's not really chopped and screwed or anything. It's just very, very sort of, um, I'm not going to say basic, but it, it like it's good at what it is. And that always like kind of reminded me. You know, you can just present, you know, your samples however you want. If you like it, then that should be that should be enough. And yeah, I think um, I think Waterfront's um, amazing. No, same. I, I have oh. uh, actually three copies bought at different times of different editions of uh, <laughs> With Love because I just love that album. <laughs> Oh yeah, cool. So you've got like multiple copies of different like different release times. Yeah, I've got their <laughs> final reissue ever from Lost Angles. I've got uh, one of the first reissues, and then I tracked down uh, a first release of it. So that's all on the shelf. Awesome. Yeah, they're good ones to have in the collection. I don't have any physicals of Waterfront, and that'd be something I'd like to to change. Hopefully next year. So we will see. I don't have a record player, you know. So I actually want to. I want to collect, but I want to be able to enjoy them as well. Oh, same. And I'm I'm in that boat. Like I have a like a set player, and it works really well. And I've got mm -hmm. it hooked up to uh, an amplifier into a uh, Kenwood Hi-Fi speaker. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you get decent sound. Yeah, it was really weird at first, like getting it set up because the like impedance is funny. But cut my own speaker wire, made it happen. What else? I'm not, I'm not bragging. Yeah, cool. No, 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 no. Look, I think it's important. No, it's important to take pride in your in your setup because you know it's a very it's a personal thing. It's like when you go to someone's house and they've got their TV and their you know their cable or whatever it is and their stereo. It's like you if someone like a, a friend or a guest is trying to make it work. It's just like it, it, there are unconventional connections between stereo between you know wires and and uh, and leads and things and it's a it, it's a reflection of who you are as a person, I think, uh, on some level. So, yeah, uh, whatever you whatever it is, if it's if uh, if it works for you, then they're just gonna have to, you know, let you use the remote instead and yeah. not be like, ah, I can't make it work. It's just like, dude, you know, you got a romance. It's like a car, you know, you got a, you know, it's a very it's a very personal thing. You know, you got levels and dials all set to your pre preference. Can't fuck with that. Yeah, don't mess with my amplifier. Uh, so, touch, you were speaking of the uh, the like J card series earlier. Like, is there any um, like plans on actually getting that on cassette? Uh, a few of them are already on cassette. Um, so, uh, ooh, let me just uh, turn around. Get your plugs in. And uh, get my plugs in. So the ones <laughs> that are on, yeah, hang on a sec. All right. I think there's like six. Yeah, I got like six tapes here. So six out of the sixteen are already on physical. Actually, no, I lie. Seven because one just came out on section nine, uh, and that uh, that's come out on tape as well. So Seiko Mart's got Hospital Gojic. Uh, Holloway Tapes has got Space Lounge. Pacific Plaza has Forever. No, they've got Sky Gaze. Who's got Forever? Uh, damn. Oh, uh, j j j Seaside Tapes, my apologies. Sorry, Seaside. Um, uh, Virtua 94 is on... Uh, sorry, Virtua Fantasy 11 is on Virtua 94. Sunset Grill is on Gulf. And Kahuna Kill is on Palm 84. So, I mean, I would love for all of these to be physical. Um, you know, as a, as a J-card box set, I mean, you know, it's, it hopefully, if, you know... I, I can flex enough clout, there might be enough to motivate people to want to collect something like that because that would be something that I'd like to 
uh, to have like 16 tapes, all compilations, all laid out in the same J card style. But um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I know I, I didn't really set out when I sent those albums out to labels for them to 100% be released as a physical. Um, so I didn't like, you know, look and go, oh, well, these guys do tapes. So I'll definitely send it to them based on that. Like I wanted it to be a bit more like, well, you know, are they going to represent the sound? Does it work for them? Does it work for me? But, um, but yeah, in answer to your question, like other than these seven that are coming out, uh, that have, that have come out, I would like the, the remaining, uh, eight to, uh, or nine, sorry, to, no, sorry, <laughs> maths. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I suck Bobby. Maths. I'll tell you what, Bob, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. I don't think you like you, Dad. Um, yeah, so it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, what you listening to, son? Um, yeah, <laughs> um, I want them all to be on tapes, man. That'd be that'd be a dream for me. I know that the last compilation is a Future Funk one, um, uh, which I've been slowly curating since April this year um, and I would like for that to be on tape but I'm gunning for that one to be on vinyl so yeah time will tell we'll know closer to January if it all comes through I don't know maybe I should start a petition and then just ask the labels that haven't put it out on tape if they'd like to put it out on tape if there's a demand I'm sure they could do it but I don't want to be the one to be like put it out on tape put it I out. sent you an album it'll sell I promise yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. I don't want an artist. Don't. Don't worry about me. It's not about me, man. It's about you. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to for them to come out, but who knows? Nice. So seven of them are already out, and it's just the other nine you're you're gonna try to get now, which is pretty dope. Which is seven more albums than I have out on cassette, so. Oh. Wow. I, there you go. I don't actually make music yet. I'm getting there. But you play music. I do play music. Uh, I've been looking to get a like MIDI controller and a like DAW so I can start messing around in FL Studio. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be a good idea, man. It's it's um it's great, especially obviously you know being someone that plays uh, physical instruments. Um, it's it's a it's a natural process and it's fun. I've got a MIDI um, a MIDI fighter and Ableton, which I most certainly don't use as much as I should. Um, and also a DJ controller as well, um, which is, yeah, it's fun, you know? It's just another element to making and enjoying and playing music. So I'd highly recommend to, uh, to do it. Do you reckon you'll, uh, you know, get into another band and, and, and play, or do you reckon that, that period's past you now? Uh, I've been fixing up all my amplifiers and, like, all my guitars, getting them back into, like, play shape. So I think I might hop into another band and just see what that's like. But I also want to start you know making making some stuff i also like like you know a future funk album or a classic vapor or hard vapor album Mm-hmm. awesome you better uh yeah you better let me know you have to link me up man because um yeah i'm all in all in support of people uh getting involved we need we need more because we clearly don't have enough um music uh, producers out there we need more yeah always yeah uh, <laughs> heaps more <laughs> Heaps. Ah, I was wondering if you were going to say heaps. Sorry, I'm very happy about this. Oh, is that an Australian thing that uh, you guys like? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, cool. Well, now, yeah, I was like, am I being made fun of right now? No, um, you're not being made yeah. fun of. Oh, cool. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it is an Australian thing. It's like, oh, man, that was heaps sick. You know, that was that was fucking, that was grass. I mean, like, if 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 you threw on the, like, Boston accent, sorry, being like, wicked, I might make fun of you, but... But heaps is dope. Wicked, ah, uh, that was wicked smart. Jab yeah. my cat. Jab yeah. my cat. <laughs> Have it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even understand. Fucking, what... that, it, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird accent that one. It's, uh, just... it's funny actually because my my hair's like I've grown my hair out to this like sort of massive sort of afro, and I uh, showed my friend and he was just like, "You look like anyone that played in the Boston Celtics in the seventies." <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's true. <laughs> Basically, everybody like had those hairstyles back then. Oh, they did. Um, especially the Boston Celtics. So, yeah. For whatever. Um, yeah. Put on, I'll try not to. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to put on too much of a twang. I'll just keep it in my my normal Australian accent. I'm proud of it. People love it. I don't know why. It's such a horrible sounding 
droney, drawn out, you know, like we, we don't, you know, we don't curve our R's, you know, we just kind of like let it, let it ride out. They'd be talking to people when I was overseas in the States and, and you know, they just go, oh my God, I love that accent. Can you talk some more? You know, yeah. asking me just to say stuff and I'm like, yeah, g'day. Um, barbecue, bottle nose. Wait, okay, hold on. When, when you were, when you were in the States, did you go to an Outback Steakhouse? Did I go to a what? An, an Outback Steakhouse. It's this Australian-themed chain oh, yes, we yes, have. Yes, yes, I I saw ads for it on TV, and I just thought it was the most funniest thing because some of the dishes that they were serving is not stuff that we would have um, as Australians. So, yeah, I wanted to go. I really, really wanted to go, but, like, my ex-wife, she's just a drag because she'd be like, we've been there, it's really shit, the food shit. I'm like, I'm not going there for the food. I'm going there because I want... Like, to, I want to be a part of that ridiculous atmosphere. Like, people saying Arby's is terrible and Chuck E. Cheese is terrible. I'm like, I know they're all apparently terrible. I don't know if they're terrible or not. I just want to go because, for me as an Australian, these are, like, things that I've always been aware of that I've never had a chance to experience because they're just not popular enough to, to have in Australia. So, in answer to your question, no, I didn't go. I really want to go. And next time I go, uh, come back to America, I've got family there, so hopefully it won't be too long. I will definitely go to an Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh. yeah, talk to the manager. Like, you got a real Aussie in the house now, mate. You got to, you know, you got to pull out the stops and get your game face on. <laughs> I know. I've, I've, I've heard from every person I've met from Australia. Like, that's, that's not Australian food. And I'm like, we know. They just, yeah, for whatever reason, weird. they want to convince us that Australians just eat a fried onion all the time. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, it's yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm I'm just gonna blame one of our older older politicians who who, who I won't name because I don't want to give them any particular uh, plugs. But um, you know, eating 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 onions um, is not something we do as a recreational pastime. Um, we we like to cook them and have them uh, with other food. So don't assume that we're just uh, taking kangaroos to school because we missed the bus and eating raw onions um and yes there are a lot of animals that can kill you but i would wager that um you guys have way more firearms uh and bullets <laughs> than we do poisonous snakes and spiders so that's all i have to say about that <laughs> for every cane toad you have we have one assault rifle yes well actually i i do my part around here um uh, we we in queensland we've got a lot of uh, a lot of cane toads, and um, it's ba in fact, it's actually coming into cane toad season now. So if I find one, I'll I'll catch it and I'll put it in a designated freezer, and I'll basically put him it, put him to sleep, and then he'll he'll freeze to death, and then um, and then we dispose of them, um, just because it's the most humane way. A lot of people can't be bothered; they'll run over them with their bikes or their cars, or you know, just like tread on them, which I think is kind of like yeah, it's pretty gnarly. So uh yeah That's we a, just I, I yeah i like to do the the right thing i didn't i didn't even realize they were that big of a problem until i watched like a discovery channel documentary on them i was like this sounds terrifying like they don't do anything but they just ruin everything yeah they they i mean you know they're not they weren't native to our ecosystem we brought them in because we had a, an issue and um with uh, um with locusts i think it was yeah it was locusts but then they didn't go after them because they were like well these other bugs are way easier to catch yeah, yeah, it's it's completely backfired on us, and it just goes to show how how um, you know sensitive our ecosystem is. And it's such a as Australia, um, eighty percent of our um, native wildlife doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, and I think about sixty percent of that is localized just north of Central Australia, which is like this kind of they call it like a, a I don't know if it's the correct word, but let's just say for conversation's sake, it's like a hyper ecosystem. So it's like it's kind of like the Amazon. It's just like brimming with all sorts of, of flora and fauna and, and animals. Um, so, yeah, beautiful country on, on a natural scale. But, um, yeah, those came toads are, are real cunts. Excuse my language. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. Um, I know I said I'd only keep you for 20-ish minutes. We've been talking for 45, so I feel like... Cool. Let's 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 hop those plugs in. Let's see what you got coming up. What you just released. Things you want people to check out, and we'll hit the road. 
All right. Uh, okay, so for those that follow uh, me online, um, you'll know that I always do the death mixes, which are a two-hour mix of Vaporwave, Experimental, Lo-Fi, um, and Future Funk and whatever um, every two weeks. <clears throat> that will continue on for the foreseeable future, so there's always that, that you can check out on Mixcloud. Um, I have a split album with Acid Ra that's um, being finished. I've just been um, kind of inspirationalist at the moment, so it's 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 a slow burn. A uh, couple of solo albums. Um, I've got one that I want to send to Cell Death, so hopefully that'll be finished sometime soon. And yeah, a couple of other ones that haven't been allocated to a label, so I may self-release them or just see if anyone wants to pick them up. Um, obviously this last J-Card uh, entry, which is called uh, Cherry Ridge, uh, Rally Champions will be out hopefully in January or at the very latest uh, February. And my GoFundMe, which um, is still running, has kind of um, slowed down in terms of donations, but that's only because I haven't been plugging it. But I'm going to actually, uh, this will be the first time I've ever made this particular announcement, but I'm going to change it from a, a blue screen tour around Australia to a more of a an Australian version of Electronicon tour. So if you do support the GoFundMe, it won't go just towards me. It'll go towards me, Tupperwave, Buckman, uh, Malibu, and obviously people outside of uh, Queensland in their respective states. So it's gonna. We, we, we want to make it a bit more of a, a bit more of a um, not a, a blue screen thing, but uh, an Australian vaporwave artist thing. So hopefully uh, everyone can get behind that because um, <laughs> I was watching the live stream and, and I was talking to Tupperwave and I was just like, dude, we need to be over there. And he's like, I know this fucking sucks. So yeah, quite quite jealous. So we thought, well, if we can't go there for now, then we should just make our own, and and uh, hopefully that'll make some waves. Yeah, we'll have <laughs> our own tour waves. with blackjack and hookers. Yeah. Also, did you say uh, Malibu? Blackjack. Mm -hmm. Oh, I own one of his albums actually. Neat. I've there got, you go. I've got no sleep. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'd like um I'd like him to do some more stuff, and it's been a little while, so I'm hope I'm, I keep trying to like invite him to like compilations and stuff and yeah i think he's just on a on a on a very personal path at the moment so i'm hoping when he um comes back around um we'll all be able to yeah get together and collaborate and stuff nice good well, people well thank you so much for chatting with me no nah, man the, look thank you thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to um to to kick it with you i hope it was worth your while oh super fun <laughs> i do tend to ramble <laughs> Oh no worries. I think like when when you have something that you're super into, everybody just wants to wants to jump in and go for a minute. Yeah, I know, and I and I and I apologize because a lot of the time, if if I'm doing that and someone interrupts me, I get really upset. But then if someone's talking and then I interrupt them, I don't realize the hypocrisy, and so I start, you know, it's it's yeah, it's like when you're really interested in something, you become very animated. Your hands start flowing around, and people are like, I haven't finished talking, okay? And you're like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You go, you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope I hope I, was, I hope it was tolerable. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'm gonna sign this off real quick here. Thank you all for listening.